Good afternoon. Hello, 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 everybody. Where are my executors at? We have a really good live today. What's going on, my guy? What's going on, Jim Rat? We have an amazing, amazing live today. Comment the word man T. All right, what's up, y'all? Oh, oh, she, she's already ready to play right now. We have an amazing live for you guys today. I know you guys have been requesting this information for so long. So let's let's go live and talk about it. All right, we're going to be talking about corporate transparency. You guys ready to learn? You guys ready to learn? We're going to learn today. Let's see if she's going to join accept. All right, I click it, accept. We have an amazing attorney that's going to jump on our live today, guys, to talk about the Corporate Transparency Act. What's up, sis? What's up? Hold on. Okay. I can see myself. You outside. Because I... I have a baby inside. So you have a baby inside, so that's why you have to go outside to do the live? Oh. You you might have to go inside because you choppy. You you breaking up a little bit. Uh oh, hold on. Let's zoom with some Wi Fi. Hold on. Yeah, let's do that. What's up, Amari? How you feeling? What's going on, everybody? So listen, today we are going to be talking about the Corporate Transparency Act. We're gonna have a little conversation about trust, also, because I know you guys have been asking about this conversation a lot. We about to wrap up the new year and everybody's worried about January, what's gonna happen in January. So we're gonna talk about Corporate Transparency Act with our amazing, amazing attorney, Sister LaVon. How you doing today? Again, how are you? I am wonderful. There you go. How that's, are you guys a little going? Bit yeah. Good, good, good. So definitely click, click the arrow above and definitely follow her. Um, we appreciate what's up, Aranda, and follow her so we can talk. So sis. You ready to talk? You ready to teach? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's get All it. All right. My DMs are always going crazy about this same stuff. Herman, Corporate Transparency Act, this, Corporate Transparency Act, that. There's a lot of rumors. There's a lot of gossip, a lot of misinformation. So I wanted to get an attorney on the call, right, so we can have a transparent conversation about this. So based on information, can you please tell everybody what's going on with the corporate transparency and then we'll dig deep about what everybody should be preparing for to do in the next two to six weeks. Yep. Okay. So hi guys. I'm LaVon Idolette. I am Florida based. Um, I focus on securities law and um, complex complex structures such as trusts and holding companies and that sort of thing. And um to give context and some color, um, okay. the Corporate Transparency Act came out two years ago, but it's going to be effective January 1st, 2024. So I know that that dates make people think that something is really about to happen. Right. But the truth is, is that if you already have an entity, nothing will happen for you. You don't have to do anything until january 1st 2025 you have a whole year to figure out what it is that you want to report wait now, a minute wait a all minute. right you have, to, you have to stop right there okay so that's the first thing that's the first thing we need to talk about because everybody's like what do i need to do with my my um my holding company what do i need to do with my llc what do i need to do with my business entity that i have right now yes. So you're telling everybody, this is coming from an attorney, share this live out, stop being cheap with this information. It's coming <laughs> from an attorney. If I have Bella Sloan Enterprises LLC, Assets Only LLC, Audit Your Circle LLC, yep. you telling me right now, somebody in the comments like, people don't like to read. Right <laughs> now, there's nothing they need to do for another year that like they're good right now. They're good. They have, they're grandfathered and you get 12 months to comply. So okay. if you start a business January 1st, 2024, you have 90 days to comply with submitting beneficial ownership information. And then thereafter, after 2025, if you start a company, you have 30 days to comply. Now, compliance, let's talk about what, we, what that actually means. Mm -hmm. So... 
been sin has existed forever. Everybody only knows one thing it does, though. If you put $10,000 into a bank account, you fill out a form. That's a FinCEN form. Right. So that is because FinCEN's whole job is only about money laundering and not helping people be terrorists. So the purpose of this Corporate Transparency Act is to make sure that we know who owns and controls businesses in the United States. There are quite a few categories that are actually exempt from having to submit information. But the only reason they're exempt is because they are submitting information other places, such as CPA firms, law firms, money transmitters, um, investment advisory firms, et cetera. We already have to um, report information to FINRA and the SEC. So they're like, it's not overkill. You don't have to report. But if you are a corporation or an LLC that is foreign or in the United States, Mm -hmm. You do have to report um, who your beneficial owners are. Beneficial ownership means 25% or more of a company's ownership, or you have substantial control. That's the part that's going to get most people. Most people have an understanding that if you don't put, if you don't own more than 25% of a company and you don't have to put your name on things, which I tell people all the time when they come to me for financing homes and that sort of thing, investment properties, if you got the bad credit, make sure you own less than 25% so we don't have to pull your credit. Right, 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 right. But I think the part that's creating the most chaos is what does um, reporting actually mean? So you're reporting it to FinCEN, but that is a database that is private. It's not public records like when you apply for a new LLC with the state and they put your name on the state's registry. It's not like that at all. It's because that would be a violation of privacy. You have the right to be private. So all Fenson is doing is it's taking the information and then it's saying, all right, now we know who owns things. So if something comes up in this account and this company gets flagged or sued, then we know who to go after. Mm-hmm. The only way that anybody in the public sphere can get access to the information that's on the BOL report is by a legal reason. Like they have to submit documentations and pay to get access to this docu- uh, to this information. So it's nothing like, you know, when you decided you wanted to start an LLC in Florida and you filled out the form, you paid your 125, right, and right, now right. your name, address, and everything that you report is on the internet. It's, it's just- not like that at all. And so I think the most important thing that people should be looking at and should be doing because uh-huh. I am a firm believer that your name, address, and things should not be in public records because it it is a layer of asset protection to just be private. Right. Um, is that you need to be removing your name from public records by using nominees. And so nominees are just people who offer the service to stand in your place in public records and you're still the beneficial owner. You are still the um, majority own, um, operator of the thing, but your name is not in the public records on these state sites and all of that kind of stuff. Okay. And so the other thing that I think is important to mention is you did not hear me say anything about trust because no, trust don't ha- trust do not have to report anything to anybody because right. there's an unlimited there is an unlimited license for United States citizens to contract. So your contracts are not for public records or for anybody else's business. So the beneficial owners of trust will never be in anybody's database. Okay. All right. We got to take a time. So (laughs) first of all, we've been on here nine minutes. Yo, we've been on here nine minutes and that information was absolutely crazy. Right. (laughs) Coquetta lounge room. Coquetta's like this. What? Wow. Okay. All right, so for you guys who just jumped on a live, we're talking about the Corporate Transparency Act, um, and we're going to dive into trust a little bit. So for the people who have a business right now, a business entity, Amari Fields of Vibes, who have a business entity right now, they're aware, we are grandfathered in, we have another year before we have to deal with penalties and 
and we have to fill out the BOI, right? Before we had to disclose who the beneficial owners are of these S Corps and of these LLCs, all right? Um, so we're good for at least another year. But what's really interesting is I want you to talk a little bit more about this nominee situation. Okay. Let's talk about this nominee situation about your information being in the corporate space and then we're in, in the public space and then we're going to trust and all that stuff holding companies. Yes, I am recording this. I will make sure I post this live and I'm putting it on YouTube. It's going to be put, posted everywhere. La la, your, your life is going to be very interesting after we drop this live. <laughs> it's going to be very crazy. So talk about this nominee situation. Go ahead. Run that back again, please. Yes. So a nominee is a company that offers a service or you can use a person. Like literally, I know people who just say, all right, you're my home girl. You know, you, you, your stuff is clean. You good. You, you're not doing too much. You don't have a lot of business interests. So it doesn't matter that your name is in the public. Mm -hmm. You use your name or that company's name and they fill out the forms. So they fill out the forms on your behalf as a nominee and so once once they fill the forms out with the state you're going to get a second document once it's done uh -huh. so you'll get the documents from the state that's your company is good to go you're ready you got action all of that then you'll receive a transfer of incorp from the incorporator so your nominee is basically standing in your place for the public and you get all the benefits in a private contract so they're going to send you that now your name's not in the public records and you have the entity created jesus christ so so we just created first you got the the business layer right the llc layer and now what's up unique and now we're talking about the nominee layer yep so this is how you're making yourself even more private in the public space because we live in a very litigious society everybody likes to sue everybody every five minutes exactly so we have an attorney on the call right now showing you how to start to first protect yourself even more so um especially because everybody's so concerned about the corporate transparency act and you said something interesting to the people that just came on late um that i'm learning also with fincen fincen is not a public database so even though everybody will be disclosing the beneficial owner of these llcs mm -hmm. right um mm -hmm. that information is still technically private and in order to get that information fees have to be paid and basically you have to be in litigation so an attorney could be, basically find out who that is. Yep. The, the owner of Bella Sloan is if they wanted to. Yep. But I can add a layer by get, by adding a nominee um, um, to my business, right? So they so my name still is not gonna be exposed if they pay for that information. That's right. No, no, no. So not if they paid for the information. Mm -hmm. So if they paid for the information, they're gonna know who the beneficial owner is and who controls the company. But the, the part that the layer creates is unless they have a real reason to be suing Bella Sloan specifically, they would have never figured out that you were the owner to be going after that company. Got you. So Bella Sloan doing something to a person will probably end up getting pierced and not pierced, but your information may get to an attorney because they're suing the company. They're just going to go and they're going to submit to Fincen and they're going to get the information. But let's say someone's like Herbert Diaz. I mean, Herman Diaz something to me mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to sue him personally and through all these companies. Cause I'm going to try to figure out how to get, through a corporate veil so we know every place he owns right right so what they're going to do is they're going to search online and try to find out what you own but if nothing comes up because your name is not in public records okay they don't know where to go oh this is wild this is wild this is wild this is game right here where you been lala we, we were talking we were talking about other stuff i didn't know you were her <laughs> we talk, i'll tell y'all later what me and lala be talking about <laughs> offline this is wild yes okay all right so let's fast forward just a little bit how does the holding companies and trust come into play um per se because this is this is my limited information and this stuff that i've shared with a couple of people um, all right, you got your trust. That's amazing. We know how powerful they can be. There are, I, I need to say this out loud, there are more than 70 type of trusts, right? So I know all the internet gurus are telling you this trust is irrevocable. You have to speak an attorney to talk about which trust best fits your needs. That's number one. 
Number two, you have your trust and then you have a holding company and then you have your businesses under that. I talk about that basic structure. How does that work kind of sort of in the world that we're moving into 2024 as an attorney mm -hmm. um, who, who does complex um, structures um, to somebody in 2024 who's going to be buying a lot more assets, businesses and things like that. Can we talk about that a little bit? So, number one, I want to tell you that there are way more than 70 trusts. Woo! But the truth is, is that a trust is nothing more than a contract and it has mm -hmm. elements and the elements that you add to it create a name for a trust. So they're like branding certain ideas and calling it a type of trust. Okay. Generally, it, it's just a contract. So you got revocable and irrevocable and then all the things that can go inside of it create the names. Got you. Um, um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is I use um, layers of trust as an asset protection strategy because if you have anything worth fighting over, you don't want your family to have to fight over it in court and allow the court to decide who wins and loses and that sort of thing. So you want to have everything sort of written out with your wishes for what you want your family to have and instructions and things of that nature. And um, when that, when you're setting that up, a lot, a lot of people lean into, they want to be able to change it and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What I will say to that is, um, that's not asset protection, that's privacy. Mm, so and so the difference between asset protection and privacy when it comes to a trust. Yes. Okay. So a revocable trust is still all of the assets are still in your estate. Mm -hmm. So if you get sued or you get divorced, those assets can be pulled back and get be taken from you. So when you're thinking of what you want to do and be able to change, you it's very easy for you to say you know, the heirs of my body and leave it like pretty vague, if, especially if you don't have kids or you intend to have more kids, you want to be able to leave it vague, but, or it could just be as, um, and things can go inside and out of the trust. The trustee's job is to invest the capital and make sure it is sustainable. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to know every single thing you're going to do with it in advance. Okay. Um, and then, uh, but for me, my trusts own 98% of my holding company and I own 2%. Why'd you set it up that way? That's interesting. So, Why'd you do that? So, because multi-person LLCs have more protection. Right. So my holding company that down. Is right that a, down. Multi-person LLCs have more protection. Yes. Go ahead. Go so, ahead. Mm -hmm. So the trust is a person and I'm a person. Mm -hmm. So the trust owns 98%. I own 2%. I'm going to tell you that as a person who hasn't owed taxes in over 10 years, you always want to be claiming some income because you're taking the money and you're doing things. Mm -hmm. Don't. And I, I watched something last night that made me think about this. Mm -hmm. Don't be the person who has plenty of money and, and use these strategies to go out and get Medicaid and things that people who really need, need. Because that's unrighteous. And something bad is going to happen to you. Lala, mind your business. Uh -uh. That's none of your business. <laughs> it is my business. <laughs> mind your you business. Bet, you better not be on food stamps. I'm upset with you. Okay? But listen, um, but listen there before you, we have to pause there. Okay. I'm not going to let you slide because my mentees are going to hold me accountable. They're going to be in my DMs because mm -hmm. I have a tagline. That's another LLC that I have, um, Taxes a Ghetto. We're not going to slide what you just said. I haven't paid taxes in 10 years. Yeah. We're not going to let you slide on that. Yeah. You can talk about it for two seconds because we're not going to talk too much about your business. But my mentees and their mentorship, they're going to get more of that sauce. Yeah. So, uh, oh, somebody already put in the comment. It's like, she said she hasn't paid taxes <laughs> in 10 years. We need that tea. Um, <laughs> Talk about it real soft for two seconds in there, but that's for the private Facebook group. Talk about that real quick, how your trust protects you from legally yeah. not having to pay taxes. Yeah, so so, um, so like I said, 98% of the money goes into the trust. The trust files its own taxes, a 1041. Mm -hmm. My 1040 personally is receiving an, um, a salary, which I pay myself in January for the whole year, um, to pay my bills my personal bills. Right. And um, 
that amount is not that much money to be honest mm -hmm. um and then i own some real estate which is deductible um against that because i am a real estate professional so i can write it off against all of my assets right. but um all of my income mm -hmm. but so that's basically how i do it but i also so most people look at things that are negative in their life in a negative way and i'm gonna i'm gonna flip that for you so i lost money in a deal um some uh, i was a partner with a lady and a partner with a guy uh -huh. i'm about tired of trusting people in about 10 minutes i'm about tired of trusting people but anyway i was in partnerships with people who did weird funny stuff they ran off with the money or whatever whatever the case so we ended up losing money i've been writing that off against my mm. taxes for the past 13 years nice so I I owned a salon with a lady. She ran off with the money. I you know that loss. I can I can roll that over, over time. So sometimes negative things become positive in your life. Um, That's a word. And um, but I also think that by, I I I always strategically buy businesses that I can write off also. So that's a whole nother set of things. Um, now. Holding company. <laughs> are y'all hold on? Are y'all listening? Is she not snapping? Like I think people are stopping in Target right now, listening to this live, and they run into their cars so they can, so they can have their your their full attention. Share this live out. I want you to because I see Amari's giving instructions in the comments. Share this live out. Number one. Number two. That arrow at the top of your screen. Click the drop down button. I want you to follow Lala immediately and comment the word mentee in the chat so you guys can get more information. Um, in our mentorship group, because these are the high level conversations that we that we have all the time. But go ahead, sis. I'm gonna let you finish. Go ahead. Um. Okay. So, holding company, you need to. Okay. Two. You, you need to. Because you need a holding company. You need two holding companies. You need one. two holding companies. Okay. One, Why? Okay. Okay. So one is going to be for active active activities active companies active things right? right and then you're going to have one that's completely for passive things now the reason that you're going to do this is because my pat your passive one owns the fly stuff like the so the intellectual property the domain names like all of the stuff passive. right or your circle right? success has receipts things like that exactly Exactly. So all of that's going to be in your passive holding company. The passive holding company, all it does is license all of that to your active companies. So Ooh. its money right. is just from doing nothing. I, you also could have passive investments over there where like you're not involved at all LP um, positions. Yeah. That goes yeah. over there too. Literally, that does no business. Therefore, it has no danger. The assets can also be over there. So like you, if you have a car, like let's like I have a, I have a bunch of clients that own like sprinters and cars and turbo things and da, 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 da. The, the, the passive company owns those assets. It leases them to the active companies. Got you. Wow. So, um, the active companies are all under an active C corp because you wanted to be a closed loop. Right. Like it right. pays its own taxes and right. everything. And then it, right. it's it's owned by um the trust, ninety eight percent, you two percent. Um, and then those active companies underneath it are doing business and paying a management fee to that top holding company. But all of those companies are pass throughs, so they do their own accounting, but all the money is just being pushed back up to that holding company. So you end up with three tax returns a 1041 which is for your trust a 1040 for you personally and then a um uh the 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 corporation's taxes got you wow yep. so you're filing three different taxes yes <sighs> lala this is a lot of information so even even i'm overwhelmed and i kind of know what you're talking about right <laughs> so so real quick, guys, so I'm scheduled to do a podcast, the Execute Podcast. Shout out to our executive producer, Mike Morgan. 
um, we we're scheduled to do a podcast together. We're gonna, we're gonna fly down sometime in January, so we can clearly have a longer conversation about this. But yesterday, I saw you on live, and I was like, "Oh no, I can't wait! You need to jump on my <laughs> live so we can have a deeper conversation with this, so we can get the buzz going when your when your episode drop really soon." This is a lot of information. So Lala, real quick, because everybody's gonna hit me up. They're gonna be in my DMs. Please do not DM me about Lala. Please do not do that. <laughs> but Lala, do you? Because it's gonna happen. I, I know my executors. Do you provide these services for people? Do you help them get stuff structured? Do you do like consultations? Do you do those things? And if you do, how can people get in touch with you? Yes. So number one, we do do the services, including the drafting of the things, the filing of the things, the, <laughs> the, the nominee services, the trustee services. We do all of those things. Nice. Um, we set up nonprofits. We set up private equity funds. We do things. If it's got, if it's about money, we do it. But what I'm going to say is, mm -hmm. is let's say you're trying to get something done and you don't like my timeline because generally it's going to be a few business days right. for you to get things done. Right, right, and right. you're trying to get something done right uh -huh. now. I uh -huh. do have a, um, a, a do it yourself guide on how to get things from I, A to Z. I didn't even know you do that. How did they get access um, to that? Um, you just got to send me a DM that says um, entities and okay. you'll get it for free. It's a, it'll be emailed to you if you send me an email. Oh. So um, thank you. We appreciate you. All they got to do is DM you the word entity. Yep. Entity. And they'll, and then, um, I guess somebody will follow up in the DMs. Somebody will follow up and ask for your email and you'll get it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And it'll ask you what state you're in and all that kind of stuff okay. for specifics. But yeah, that's the, that, that's where you can find it. All services. We do do them. Send me a DM. If you want to get, if you want to get in depth information, send DM about being wealth wise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love it. That is absolutely great. So thank you. So first thing, everybody, I need you to click that button right there. The, 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 the arrow drop down button. I need you to follow Lala immediately. I need you to DM her because I, you know what I love? I have a, um, I have a, uh, which, what do I call it? It's my, my business practice. I call it the freemium model. I'm gonna give a bunch of information for free, right? I'm gonna yeah. give as much as I put it on live. That's why I put it on my YouTube. Um, the only thing I charge for is my time. Yep. So if you want my time, yeah, I gotta charge you for that. But Lala said, I'll give you the, I'll give you the guide. I'll give you the blueprint for free. All you have to do is DM her the word entity, right? A lot of people are saying gratitude in the chat. All you have to do is DM her the word entity and her team will follow up with her, with you. Her team, not Lala, her team, right? This is a professional attorney who's running a multi-million dollar law firm. Um, her team will reach out and they will um, send you this guy. But if you want the services, definitely DM her too. And my kids are being absolutely unprofessional. Um, you can tell they off from school. <laughs> um, they off this week from school. I really appreciate and thank you for your time, Lala. But um, I had, there was one person that had a question. I want to make sure I asked that. How can we go from being private? How do we go about being private without being made public? I don't think I understand that question. Does I, that question make sense to you? Um, maybe they're asking it the uh, opposite way. Mm -hmm. So if you already have entities and things with your name and probably your home address on the public records which makes me sad mm -hmm. um right. your your next item of business for uh -huh. when when you have to renew which you can do in advance of the time that it has to be renewed you're going to use a nominee for the renewal okay oh okay 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 got you got you got you got you a nominee yeah for renewal. because so al who's... although those pa those past annual reports are still going to be in public records you got to be doing you got to be bothering somebody for them to go looking for that like you know nah. what i'm saying you don't want the 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 current year which shows up on the actual website to have your name on it you got, got you got you so lala i have um i did a, a podcast not too long ago somebody asked me how many llc's i have and i was like i have more than 70 um because every time i think of a business idea i get the business name immediately so yeah. the moment i came up with audit your circle i i got audit your circle llc so i have a bunch of them so you and your team can help me set up structure my, my, all my LLCs, um, make them as hidden as possible, nominees, all that, structure everything so it's nice and sexy. Yes, and so that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I said, don't let me forget to say, 
Series LLC. Series LLC. You, yes. You don't need seventy LLCs. You need one series LLC, and then every series underneath it will have its own EIN and its own protection, but it's only one filing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here you go. You did not play this <laughs> game for free. All right. We are charging these folks. I'm gonna start charging for my lives. What? <laughs> Say that again. I need yeah, one LLC so, yes. and then have a bunch of what series under it and they'll each have their own EIN. What's up, Unc? Unc want that information too. What? Say that again. Yes. So it, it, within a series, there mm. is a head. That's what's filed with the state. Right. But every every sub entity which is in that series, one through two thousand. You never have to refile. You never have to repay. You never have to do anything. But each is individually protected like it's a new company and it has its own EIN number. And I can take that new EIN, open up a new bank account with it like it's its own separate entity. Yep. Technically. It has its own really? credit. It has its own things. It does its own business. All of that. One filing. What? Out there. Are you kidding me, Lala? This is the game? Yeah. What is the benefit of doing it that way instead of getting a bunch of different LLCs? Cost, efficiency, and um, that's the most important thing. Cost and efficiency. I like it. I so like it. Um, the, you know. co the cost to renew. So I have probably, because Florida doesn't recognize series LLCs. So my Florida entities, I have, I think, six or seven. Mm -hmm. And let's say to renew each one is $250, $280. Mm -hmm. So change to one Delaware series LLC, which costs $200 to renew annually, but you have those six same businesses. Right. Yeah. Got you. I got you. So with all this sauce you're giving me, what is the purpose of when people say, um, I'm going to get a Wyoming holding company, I'm going to get a Delaware holding company for anonymity purposes and all that stuff. Are those, is there still a place in the knowledge that you're giving us right now? Um, is yeah. that still necessary? Yes. So Wyoming may be the only state still that does not require the ownership to even give the information. So the state don't even know who owns the company. The nominee is the only person who's there and it doesn't get reported to any public place. So that that's number one so the biggest oldest money is in wyoming, is in wyoming. so that's why we wyoming has dynasty trusts almost every other state doesn't allow that because of the rules against perpetuity so you can do a thousand year trust in wyoming so wyoming has all the old money and they know about and they have all of the um really old bought in asset protection laws so you can't pierce the corporate veil as easily which is why people love delaware but delaware don't have nothing going for itself but corporations so they charge you a lot of money there so wyoming okay. is still the hidden tool because it's inexpensive it's fast and they don't put your name in the public records ever ever wow okay so 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 it's good to have a wyoming holding company yes but you always going to have so even if you have the companies underneath your holding company based in a place that's advantageous based on taxes, you will mm -hmm. also have a foreign filing wherever you're actually located and doing business. Okay. So okay. yeah, I, I like a Wyoming a lot, but you know, I do, I live in Florida. My offices are in Florida. We do have Florida companies that are owned by a Wyoming holding company. A Wyoming holding company. Holy owned. Okay. Holy oh sorry, we've been on a phone yes. for 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> this is a lot of information. I'm I am overwhelmed. Because I see people in the comments, they're like, wow, this is a lot of information. <laughs> this is a lot I'm of sorry, information, guys. guys. Um, no, this is great. Remember, you're going to follow Lala. You're gonna DM her the word entity so she can give you a free step-by-step -step guide. If you don't want to pay her, she's like, fine, you don't have to pay her. She'll give you the blueprint on how to do this um yourself for free. But if you want to do business so she can set up your complex structure because every every business is different 
every person has a different issue so anybody that's trying to set up a a, a a generic trust that's not how it works um it is it is case by case basis so you want to get in touch with a professional um to do this so definitely dm her um and contact her about this amazing information i can't wait for us to go deeper in our when we have our podcast um um when i come down to florida and we have a deeper conversation um and now i need to start everything over i feel like <laughs> i'll be like with you i've been doing i've been doing everything wrong because i'm gonna be doing a lot of real estate transactions next year so i want to make sure all this stuff is um is structured properly and you see these two girls running around right yeah so which trust right because bella and olivia are right here so they can hear they can hear this question which trust or which um structure is best for me to pass down my assets to the to these two children because i know there's a hundred type of trust what is the best way to do that so these two girls don't have to pay a bunch of taxes when i leave them this multi-million dollar fortune oh yeah I'm so you're alleg alleged you're, you're going to have a family trust that has spendthrift and discretionary clauses in it okay. um and so spendthrift just means that if they do something if they do something they can get blah 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 right you you're you're sort of setting parameters like mm -hmm. i want you to go to college so if you don't go to college you don't get money for this that the third whatever like parameters um if you start smoking crack you don't get no money like that kind of stuff um right, right, right. and then um and then discretionary the reason that you want it to have discretionary clauses in there is because you want your legacy to be for you and your and your family so what that means is is let's say you your daughter gets married and then she gets divorced mm -hmm. in the divorce let's say he know that you got a bunch more money for them in this trust he gonna say get i need the trust payments too and we're gonna say okay so what happens is he's going to get alimony for a certain amount of period of time during that time uh -huh. we have discretion to not make payments to the kids or the grandkids or the great grandkids because we don't give our money to strangers so we don't make the distributions during that time period so it's not owed and he can't pierce the trust he can only get what you give to the people to Gosh. the beneficiary and so that discretion allows us to keep it but what do we do for our people and our family we pay their bills already we'll be able to give them a loan uh -huh, which is uh -huh. not a distribution so that right, they can right. live while they're on this alimony or they have some sort of other ridiculous judgment this is ridiculous information this is ridiculous information so so let me get a spice let me get a spicy a little bit right we don't give our money to strangers i love that comment um, let me get spicy a little bit. Is a trust more powerful than a prenup? Of course. Of course. Why is that? Because um, a prenup is a contract. And contracts mm -hmm. come down to power, discretion, and they can be interpreted by judges. Mm. So a trust that is a revocable trust owns mm. the assets i have nothing you get what we get together that's it and we can get nothing together so and hey we might get something together but at least i know that you were here and you helped maybe during that time period but the money that i had and the things that i had before i knew you are not up for discussion so they're over here in the trust that's for my beneficiaries and maybe we'll have beneficiaries together but until that happens maybe you over here you over here this is wow this is wow this is wow this is amazing information i'm very very overwhelmed um we're about to be even closer than we were before um <laughs> I, I, i'm telling you i'm telling you we're about to i know everybody like damn hermy prenup not solid clearly it's not um uh, but the <laughs> but um definitely, the only reason you more than likely you you probably have a solid prenup if, if you did not give it to them at the last minute in contemplation of marriage because then they're going to say they signed it under duress that is a nullifier and, and you disclosed all of your assets so if you disclose all of your assets when you were mm -hmm. writing this prenup and you didn't hide things and didn't put something in your mama's right, name right, and all right. that other kind of stuff you, <coughs> your prenup most likely will stand up but a lot of people put things in their prenup that they know they shouldn't when they signed it like 
morality clauses. You knew you was cheating when you got married. You're going to cheat when you is married. Why would you even sign Why that? Why would you put you the signed that this. in the up? <laughs> You know this is yours, right? You drafted it. You can put whichever you want. And so when you, those are the things that I think that people don't think about. They think that most things are like boilerplate, like, oh, this is what a prenup has in it. No, all contracts are negotiable. Everything that's written, it needs to be for your benefit. So don't be a cheater and sign and that you ain't going to cheat. That's dumb. Okay. <laughs> got you. Got you. I have one last question because I don't want to hold okay. too much of your time, right? Um, pour over will. Pour over will is mm -hmm. is um, what I've been taught. Is what what I've been taught is say for instance, um, I do have a trust, right? Hold on. Um, if I have a, um, I do have a trust, but say for instance, I die before I'm doing a real estate. You and I are doing a real estate deal right now but I pass away before I'm able to put that into the trust. Mm -hmm. The pour over will, mm -hmm. will put, technically put that in the trust somehow. Yeah. Can you talk about that real quick? Yeah, yeah. So pour over wills are literally for the things that you may have forgotten, didn't list, or may not have been available at the time that you mm -hmm. created the trust. Mm -hmm. But you know that that's your intention, uh -huh. that you want all of your assets to pour over at your death mm -hmm. into this entity. That's all it is. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So that's the extra layer of protection just in case. Oop, I forgot to put this in the trust. That's right. Excellent. Excellent. Lala, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I know everybody's out shopping right now. They they Somebody actually said I ran back to my car so I could pay attention. Oh I'm going to let everybody get back to their Christmas shopping. I truly, truly appreciate you. I can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks in Miami. So yes. we can have a much longer conversation about trust and structure. And that's going to be an amazing podcast episode that we're going to do. So I really, really thank you. So again, everybody... I want you guys to follow Lala, DM her, but don't be annoying, right? Um, I want you to DM her the word entity so she can give you her free blueprint on how to structure your business and your assets properly. I thank you for taking the fear out of the Corporate Transparency Trust because a Corporate Transparency Act that's happening in January because my DMs has been absolutely going crazy about it. Everybody feel like, Herman, January is happening and you haven't talked about it enough. <laughs> so I was like, all right, fine. We'll do, a, we'll do a live about it because I know we talked about it in my mentorship, um, but I'm, I'm glad we had an opportunity to. So Lala, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate you. You have a happy holiday and a happy new year. But you know, I got your personal number. I'm going to text you and bother you anyway. All we'll talk right. real soon, all right? <laughs> I will be saving okay. this live. Thank you everybody for joining us. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Peace, Lala. All right, peace.